finger things like I do, autocorrect is really going to save your bacon because you're going to be typing and typing in the wrong or to or about or something like that, and autocorrect is going to step in and fill in the gap for you. Also, a new feature, math autocorrect. Remember how we showed you that there are now math equations and functionality in Word 2007? Well, guess what? We get autocorrect functionality with math features as well. So if you remember, we had written a letter to uh, Jeremy, I'll go ahead and open it up here, uh, about a tuba that he had received, a replacement tuba. And in the last video, we had seen how with grammar and spelling, we had changed it to, uh, instead of replacement, it had put a red squiggly line and said you probably want it to be replacement and or another word. And we had grammar problems and it said will bring you many and so you change that. And so that's all fixed and ready to go. But autocorrect doesn't just put the little little red squiggly line or green squiggly line under you know your grammar or your bad spelling instead it does things auto magically as a friend of mine used to call it where if you're mistyping something and that's really truly what the autocorrect is all about because autocorrect is really there automatically correcting any misspellings that it knows about so it can change certain things for example let me type in a little bit more here to Jeremy and we'll say that it is important for you to contact and I'm gonna say the but I'm gonna let's say I'm typing really fast and I accidentally say the is T E H because I'm just moving too fast as soon as I hit the space bar watch what happens Yep, it automatically changes it over to the, because it says, you know, Chris, I, I, I'm kind of figuring out that you're probably trying to say the and not t, uh, T-E-H. So we can say, all right, it's important for you to contact the customer service department on the, and I'll say telephone, but I'll spell it teleophone. So teleophone, it's pretty close. I've added that extra O in there. And then as soon as I hit space bar, yep, you got it. It said, ah, you must mean telephone. Now this is part of the magic of your autocorrect. And what it has done is it's gone ahead and said, well, we know that this is one of the commonly misspelled words. Now here's the question though. Sometimes there might be a word that's pretty close and or maybe you want to actually show a misspell word. Let's say you're talking and writing a letter to your customer support team and saying, hey, I've noticed a lot of the letters going out. Instead of saying telephone, that the computer generates the word teleophone. We need to change that. Well, if I type that and Word is automatically correcting it, it's never going to show teleophone. How do you fix that? Well, you'll notice that whenever I take my mouse and I roll it over any word that has been autocorrected, you'll see this little blue box appear underneath the word. See, there's the blue box under telephone over on the because uh, I've mistyped it. That means that they're an autocorrect. Now, see, if I go over this the, T-H-E, I spelled that one correctly. This one has the little box. If you roll over this and then roll your mouse over the box, it shows you the autocorrect options little button, the little lightning bolt saying, hey, an autocorrect was performed on this particular word. And then by just merely clicking on it, on the down arrow, it's going to give me options on what I want to do. So if I click on it, it's going to say, all right, what do you want to do? Do you want to just change it back to Teleophone? Notice it shows you the Undo button. So if I click off of here and I come up here to the Undo button, it's going to undo the autocorrect, which is the last thing that it, it did, that word did for me. So I don't have to come here and kind of roll over and try to find this. If I know that, hey, hey, stop that. I don't want you correcting telephone. I can just come back up here and click on the undo and it'll do it automatically. Or you might say, you know what, I want you to stop autocorrecting telephone or teleophone. So if, what I can do is come over here, scroll over this, it gives me my autocorrect options, and I click down, and so not only can I change it back to teleophone, I can say, hey, dude, stop automatically correcting teleophone. Just leave it alone. So this is something that I can do in order to just pretty much set it from now on. It's going to say, hey, all right, Chris, if you type teleophone, I'm not going to automatically change it over to telephone. So you can do that. 
And of course, we can control the autocorrect options themselves. So if I want to make changes to things that are happening and occurring with autocorrect, things like the um, instead of automatically changing the first word to a you know or of a paragraph to a capital or things like that, I can merely click on Control Autocorrect Options and watch this. It brings up the autocorrect options right here on my screen. Well, what if you you know you're not using this? particular uh, little the drop down arrow to get here how else can you get to the autocorrect now this is important especially if you are planning on taking the Microsoft exam and know how to get to uh, the autocorrect so I'll go ahead and cancel this come over here and remember we click on our office button and down here are now is where the word options and the tools are that we used to have up on our uh, tool menu bar well now it's on the office button bar remember that so we click on word options and if I uh, s squeeze it down here just a little bit you'll notice under proofing here is where you have your autocorrect options and you can click on your autocorrect options here you also as we saw in the previous video deal with your spelling your custom dictionaries here in the spelling and grammar but autocorrect options is where we get a lot of the powerful features that we're looking for including what your option buttons look like the two initial capitals things like that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take a look at your autocorrect and we're going to see that it says alright you've got a couple of things that will happen. First off it'll correct the two initial capitals when it comes into play. You remember how I said it capitalizes the first letter of sentences if you forget to hit the shift key and type a capital uh, I when you say I want to you know or it's important for you to contact us you can do that capitalize the first letter of any table cells a lot of people uh, this is one that I usually turn off only because I've noticed that that can become really annoying capitalize the names of days so if I start typing in Wednesday with a little W it'll actually put it up to a big W capital W and correct the accidental usage of the caps lock key and this is what I love about Microsoft they actually show you what it might look like you know you've accidentally hit the caps lock key so when you hit shift to capitalize that first letter it makes it a lowercase and then all the rest of them are going to be in uh, capitalized so it says uh oh you know if that starts happening I'll, act, I'll turn off the caps lock key just in case and then here is that behavior that we've been seeing replacing text as you type and this is really neat and what it does is it says hey whenever I see this being typed I automatically replace it with this column now obviously you got some cool things here like you if I put a parens little c close parens it gives me the copyright symbol you know parens little r close parens it gives me the registered mark uh, tm is the trademark uh, you know you can get your ellipses and then of course we've seen these nowadays in the you know with the uh, emoticons here's my little smiley face or frowny face I can do if it sees that it'll automatically uh, change it by the way interesting behavior um, this is a side note free of charge not on the exam but uh, you'll notice that when you send these where word 2007 and even 2003 would do this um, where they put in the little actually smiley face icon if your word processor or your mail program didn't recognize it it shows up as a J it's kind of interesting it's like a little J shows up and if you ever wonder hey why is my m note for my friend have this J at the end of a sentence more than likely your friend was trying to put in a little happy face emoticon so all right back to back to where we are here I just I found that out by accident one day and I was just like oh that's interesting so that's what that means but notice it's not just little symbols here as you begin to scroll down you see the smiley faces you can see how you can create arrows bold arrows ah here we go starting with the A's notice if you accidentally hit the B too many times when you're trying to say about A B B O U T it's going to change it to about or if you're like me sometimes the one hand gets a little bit faster than the other hand and you put the T in before the U when it should be UT it'll automatically change that now this is really cool now if you'll notice here there's a lot of words here and I can scroll down and I mean C D F and they they've pretty much come up with a lot of the most commonly uh, used ones but what if there's another one that you just seem to misspell uh, quite a bit and you have some problems with for example let's say uh, let's see if it's in nowadays uh, I know in 2003 it wasn't let's say I, you misspell the word double I do it all the time so I'm gonna scroll down here 
find the do and let's see if we have double as one that is uh, misspelled a lot and uh, nope it's not see dos I don't see the dou uh, for double so let's say I have a tendency to spell double d o b b l e double well what I can do is come over here and I say I want to use that as double okay so we can do that so I go ahead and add that one and once I do that check it out it is now in the list or maybe another one that I do is uh, uh, instead of double is I put D O B L E and that also c it can be used for double so I can add it so as I'm adding these words notice that this is what I might type mistakenly and this is what it's going to um, over here is what it's going to change. So double will be double. D O B L E is you know you forget the U, you know whatever you want to do. Now watch this. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to click OK and get out of my word options. And now it'll say it's important for you to contact the customer service department on the telephone. And let's say I want to say uh, double time. Well, we'll just type in one of the, one of the words here. Let's see. So I I said D U uh, B B or D O B B L E. Remember double, and I hit space. Watch, boom! There it is. Double has now been correctly spelled. Now, if I had done that beforehand, it wouldn't have worked well. I would have uh, done that. For example, uh, a word like let's say we type in the word available. So let's spell it A B A B L E, and then I hit space. Now notice. It didn't automatically correct it, but instead it says, um, I've got, uh, I, I, don't, I don't recognize this word. And so again, this is where we could right click on it, and then we can find out that it doesn't have any suggestions, or we can go up here and hit the autocorrect. And what this is going to do is enable us to get the autocorrect options open up, and then we can add this particular one to it. So now we can say A B A B L E, replace it with available. And we go ahead and we add that. So now that's a new one that they're going to have in there. So we go ahead and click OK. And now this time, and I rewind back here and I say A B A B L E, and I hit space. Bada bing, bada boom, there we go, double available now that we're having it. So this is just to kind of show you how with the autocorrect, the autocorrect already has some pre-built things in that are really cool that we can use where it will automatically fix words. But what's really neat is that with Word 2007, you also add math functionality to this as well. If you remember, in the, one of our previous videos, we showed you how you can insert math equations. So if you look up here under Insert, in 2007, you can use equations. Now this is a 2007 only. Uh, you would have to create these as objects and like our, you know, clip art and stuff like that and drop them in in the older versions. But here we could go in and say, hey, I want to put the area of a circle in. And when you do that, it creates, creates what's known as a math region. And within this region, you also have autocorrect options where it will automatically insert text as you're trying to type or if you make a mistake slightly on, on something it can help you out. For example, I can hit the uh, backslash and then type in quadratic and hit space. And When I do that, it will automatically insert the quadratic formula. So you're going to see that right there. Now that's kind of cool. And if I wanted to, I could say something like uh, I can hit the uh, the uh, right angle bracket right here. So I'll hit a right angle bracket and hit, hit the equal and it'll give me a greater than or equal symbol. So this is kind of neat. We can use this in uh, the uh, math autocorrect functionality even within the math regions. But what's really neat is that you can do this even outside of these math regions. Let's say you're not using equations. Uh, you know, you're just kind of like, eh, I'm not going to really use that. What you can do is you can set it up so the autocorrect works even if you're using these math functionalities within the text itself. How do you do that? Let's pop up over here and click on the Office button and go to Word Options. Go ahead and size this down and click on Proofing. 
Here we'll see our autocorrect options, and one of these is going to be the math autocorrect. So you got our regular autocorrect. We already saw how that worked. And here's the math autocorrect. Now here's where I talked about the use math autocorrect rules outside of the math regions. Right now, it's not set up. So if I go ahead and click OK here and click OK here, and let's say I uh, will go ahead and select